let me know if you could hear me. Um, I'd like to get an audio check because I'm so shit at doing all this. There's always some sort of audio issue. So in the chat, if it sounds good, it looks good on my end, let me know how it is. And uh, we also have a guest here. I may have to adjust the way that you look. I don't know why I didn't do that earlier, but hello, hello, Edwin. I think they could hear you as well. Here. Yeah. Let me. Oops. Okay. Oh, no, no. What was that? No, just saying hi to everybody. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm just adjusting how you look now. Now you're in the center of the TV. Great, cool. <laughs> Um, so let's have us both on together, see how that looks. This is my, you know, I normally have this other computer, but it's in storage right now and I'm on my laptop. So I have to like adjust all the graphics and my like stream graphic, my interview graphics and everything. So I had to readjust everything. I'll center you a little bit more on this one. And, uh, there we go. Yay, now we're both on the screen together. Hey. Um, so yeah, you are a comic book creator. And we it's always great to like do the whole let's collab, let's get on everyone that's doing a, a show and uh, you know, especially what I am into on my channel is definitely not just promoting other people but like bringing people to show my viewers because my viewers are always really interesting artsy focused type people so it's uh it's always great to have people on and they're like thanks for showing me that person or thanks for introducing me to that that's really awesome so it makes me really happy to do that so welcome comic book creator yeah thank you for having me on yeah um so i don't i didn't really do much research on the stuff that you sent me and your campaign we'll bring it up in a minute but uh, it's always a twofold thing with that. It's like, okay, A, I don't really, <laughs> I don't really know what to talk to you about right now. I don't know anything about what's going on. But B, that's kind of a good thing because then I get to kind of learn about it fresh, just like the audience is. Uh, so why don't you just tell me a, kind of what you want to start with, what, what's going on? We could talk about your project and bring it up on screen, but you can also start with how you got into it and, and why you started doing a project. Yeah, uh, you know, I think the easiest way is just to start at the beginning. So a little bit of uh, background on me. My name is Edwin Acevedo. Uh, I'm the writer and creator of the Ace Volume 1, which is now on Indiegogo. Uh, but about me, uh, you know, I'm a lifelong comic book fan. Uh, I, you know, grew up uh, in Puerto Rico. I came to the States when I was about seven years old. And, uh, you know, it was a brand new uh, place for me. I didn't know the language. I only had a cousin that I knew uh, that was family around here. So it's basically, you know, starting fresh. And as a young kid, you know, I didn't have a lot of friends or anything. So discovering comics was like the Atari games and all that. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered X-Men and, you know, those comics really kind of, uh, they were my, my friends. They were what well, kind of inspired me to learn English to, to kind of think it helped with my vocabulary and everything kind of early on because I, I wanted to know what was going on in these books that I was picking up every couple of weeks at like a little grocery store uh, nearby where we lived. So yeah, that started the love and ever since then, I you know, aside from like a small couple of year gap, I've always collected and uh, supported comic books. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So you had actual comic books. I mean, I think you're probably more my age. Uh, so I think we definitely had those printed comic books around much more than they are nowadays that the kids are into the online stuff and digital things. So that's cool. All right. Yeah, so no, then... There's nothing like uh, going to a spinner rack and uh, picking out your favorite comic every, every couple of weeks. Right. Right. Okay. So this got to work, but thanks for the stream. Okay. So this reminds me, I might have to turn this off, but I, I've been having a weird glitch. If anyone knows <laughs> how to handle this, otherwise I'm just going to turn off my stream labs. But I have this weird glitch. This isn't a real super chat or a donation. It was in the past, like last week or something. But for some reason, every like 10 minutes, 
my like Streamlabs goes off with an old super chat and it interrupts everything. And this is why I turned it off during the Michael Graves interview. So I may have to just turn it off again now because this is going to keep happening. And now that it started, it's going to do a few in a row. And they're not real donation. But I guess it's a good reminder if you do want to help donate um, and send me a real super chat or a real uh, Streamlabs donation, I have the link up here. It's, oh, yep. See, there it is. This is going to keep happening. I have to just turn this off. Someone needs My to super chat is working again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is an old, it's an old super chat. See, we're not even on YouTube, so it's not a super chat. Oh, God, if someone knows how to help me out with this, this is so annoying. I'm not a techie person. But if you do want to have a real donation, go to the streamlabs.com slash Martina Marcota TV. Uh, it is, uh, you know, you can help me out with a real donation and it'll show up on this goal down here. That would be really great. But also, since I'm promoting shit... Uh, you should also check out, I should have the uh, link in the description as far as uh, YouTube goes, but let's uh, check out Edwin's um, campaign and, you know, help him out a little bit too. If you're a comic book person, uh, which most of my people are, my people, that's what I call you guys, my people. Here, I'll put it in the chat. Oop, see, it's going to keep happening, man. I have to turn it off. I have to get Rembrandt ready. Respector. Okay, uh, yeah, Josh Randall, if you are watching this too, you're going to like laugh your ass off because this is like going to keep happening and your, your super old super chats keep popping up. Let me turn it off, but I just put in the uh, chat the Indiegogo, and let me show you on screen actually the Indiegogo, but you guys should also support. Let me get into that, and then let me turn off your Streamlabs. Hold on, Streamlabs widgets. Let's get rid of these widgets. Get out of here, widget. You are canceled. And it sucks too because you know the, the little pop ups are really fun when people don't. Oh god, see? Oh god. Sent you an actual stream lab. Not a glitch this time, lol. Yep, yep, that was last time I told him about this glitch situation. The glitch situation has not stopped. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even in the stream right now. He's gonna laugh his, he's gonna laugh his ass off on the stream. Have a mediocre bottle of wine on me, lol. Oh, thanks. I can use the mediocre bottle of wine. Okay, I think that's it. I don't have any more widgets on, I don't think. Okay, that should stop that from happening now. If it happens again, I have to find the widget. Find the widget. But yeah, anyway, speaking of supporting, uh, let, let's check this out real quick because I think it's really important to help the community. A lot of us are super supportive. A lot of my viewers are definitely comic book people and stuff. And uh, you you do have it back. So wait, how many, how much did you, it, it was only, uh, oh God, mine's in, mine's in pounds. I'm in England right now. I don't know how to convert it to U.S. dollars, but you didn't yeah, have no problem, much, uh, you didn't have much of a goal, which is incredible. How are you doing this? Or are you the artist as well? Oh no, everything was uh, paid for beforehand. Ah. So you know, we kind of want we were waiting for like a printing and fulfillment go first, and then see if we can kind of get it passed a little further to like the real goal. Oh, that's amazing. But yeah, everybody's been great about support. Yeah, I think uh, last time I checked, it was at forty six seventy five US. So really, oh, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. US dollars. Okay, um, yeah, no, because uh, you, we definitely have to get you more. If you guys are watching and you're into this stuff, uh, let's get into what it's about, so maybe we can sell them on it. Uh, but I love to <laughs> see good people getting fulfilled as well and well i mean you know you did it smart because <laughs> it was my first time doing a comic book and i had a lot of drama and a lot of issues and it's super super late so i think it's a really smart way of how you did it i'm going to do that next time as well i'm going to just secretly for my book too just get as much done as possible so that when i go live it's basically just uh you know smooth sailing will be shipping soon so yeah, so what is this about? You have like two project stocks? I feel like you sent me another image that was really cool. Um, no, I think the, the two images I sent you one was a poster for like a, 
you know, that were it's actually in the campaign, but uh, it's called something else aside from the Ace. Right. Uh, so, what is uh, the Ace about? Yeah, the Ace uh, is about a young man, David Diaz. Uh, he just turned out 21 years old. He's out of college, he's time job, and he's trying to figure out what his purpose in life is. He feels there's more out there for him than uh, what's currently going on. And one day, by happenstance, uh, he sees a shooting star crash land in a park nearby. So he goes to discover uh, the wreckage, and he finds something there that gives him the ability to transform into an armored uh, being, which is... As you can see, uh, that armored guy right there, that's uh, that's what he calls the ace. And uh, basically, the main story is about uh, Akula, who's this uh, alien bounty hunter shark who uh, tracks David down and wants the armor for himself. So, uh, yeah, to face off. So basically, just setting up David, what, what he's been doing with the armor, kind of touching on his family life. And then, you know, I think you got to have some action. So, uh, you know, he throws down with Akula. In there, it's just kind of the, the the first issue kind of sets up kind of it is meant to be an ongoing. I've already actually written the script for volume two, and our my artist Canales already has the script in hand. Amazing. So he'll, he'll be working on it in May. So yeah, it's just still the start. We're, we're setting everything up so we can kind of take it to the to the next level in our future volumes. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm doing something similar, but just uh, my internet connection really sucks. So sometimes I think you glitch out of it and just so that people catch that because it got a little fuzzy but I think it's a really cool concept of what you just said about um, he has this like armored kind of uh, oh, persona? I don't want to say persona whatever you said he turn, has this armored kind of gear on <laughs> and uh, yeah. so, someone's after him who wants who wants that armor gear is what you're saying the, uh, yeah, the, the Akula? Uh, yeah, the, yeah Akula he's uh, the, the giant uh, shark guy that you see in the uh, uh, in the cover there. Okay. Yeah. Let me see the giant. Yeah. So basically, uh, you know, the armor doesn't really work kind of like a traditional kind of think of like an Iron Man armor. Mm -hmm. uh, the this armor is a little more different than that. You know, it, it has a. A power so definitely uh, like a unique kind of. Uh, Melding of uh, of both of them, you know. I'm a big. Uh, I grew up in the '90s, so I'm a big, uh, you know, Dark Hawk fan. And I think it's anybody who's ever read Dark Hawk kind of similarities in in, in some ways. Uh, that was kind of one of my big inspirations uh, as I was growing up as a teenager. I absolutely loved that book. Uh, mm. Okay, I just want to make sure that. Hello, hello. So sorry. This is kind of back. All right, no, so sorry. Uh, someone just said that. Uh, oop, shit, that we lost. They lost us. But I just wanted to say, sorry, Edward, about all my tech troubles. It's just like I'm so, uh, no, I hate, good. sometimes I just hate. I hate doing Trust this. Stuff. I, I run my own stream every uh, Friday on my YouTube channel, and it's an yeah. adventure. You know, it doesn't know what's get, what's gonna happen, oh, happen every week. I'm like. Ugh. I know, but it doesn't they matter what you use. Use yard Skype. It's it's, it's always. I know, Probably. exactly. And it's like, no matter how much I prepare, like, I prepared last time and, and did, like, uh, checks and all that, like, w the day before and whatever, and, and it's, of course, somehow still issues. Um, but anyway, I, I mean, it looks good on my end, so just give me a, a thumbs up, guys, in the chat if, if it's all good, because it looks good on my end. V Live is up and rolling, and I think our levels yeah, are all set. I think we're good. Uh, yeah, no, sorry. I have an eye on, the, uh, on my cell phone, so it looks good on from what I can see, so. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I, I really like what you said, too, about, because that's kind of how Lady Alchemy, my comic book, goes as well, especially in the beginning, is that it's it's something, and this is why I wanted it to, to start like this, because not only is it something, because yeah, mine is about me, uh, but I feel like it can resonate even with other male readers or anyone and it's something similar to what you said is just like trying to find one's purpose in life, you know, and I think that's a basic thing that people kind of uh, most people kind of think about, you know, what what is the point? What's my purpose? What am I meant to become not just exist here on this planet? So I think it's a really great um, base for a superhero to kind of have that question early on and they're like making 
to be story, uh, which is also Lady Alchemy. Book one is definitely a the making of, and then it's going to continue on from there. Yeah, you know, it's it's, a, it's always been like a classic kind of mixture, you know, taking like some stuff from the real world, and then you 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 throw in the the superhero right. into it, and and it kind of creates its own uh, stories. Kind of what separates comics from every other kind of form of uh, storytelling really yeah that's true and then i uh you know it's always i always relate things to myself i don't know if that's narcissism or what but uh <laughs> i saw down here i got me a little excited because i saw uh this like angel lady and i was like ooh, yes. i'm all about that <laughs> So what is that about? Yeah, so uh, the the blonde angel woman that you see there, she's from uh, a race of these uh, celestials, they're called. Yeah. And they're basically uh, protectors of uh, of innocent, uh, you know, young girls. And uh, basically, uh, there's a four part, a four page uh, origin about Angelique, who's gonna be uh, kind of the big antagonist in volume two. So uh, we wanted a way to introduce her into the story, and we kind of get to see some of her origin. And yeah, Angelique is very—I uh, think she's going to be a, a big hit with people. Yeah, like, I, uh, love I think that. she's very powerful, and beautiful, and you know, uh, my, my dream is to have somebody cosplay her. <laughs> yeah, so I think it is, uh, so. that's doable. That's doable. Um, yeah, no, I love that because man, see, this is why I love. Uh, doing this and like not really knowing much about it when i when i start these streams with people because it's like kind of going through it organically for the first time and then i get all excited because it's like cool i get it yeah yeah really cool uh as i'm all about this uh the nephilim i don't know if you're familiar with that but that's also an angelic kind yeah. of race and that's very lady alchemy in there as well wait this this art is it the same artist for all this stuff? This one looks a little bit different. Uh, no, uh, I have uh, three different artists. I have Canales who's doing the main story. Mm -hmm. uh, I have uh, Sweens who's doing the uh, an epilogue story. Okay. Sweens is the artist from this book called Oddity. It's uh, funding right now. And then the four-page origin is by How Comics. He's uh, he's done work for Phil Diaz mm -hmm. uh, from the Lost Pages, uh, yes. Masquerade. Yes, love Phil. Yeah, yeah so. great. Yeah, uh, you know, kind of each artist kind of brings their own style and kind of fits each story perfectly. So that's kind of right. why I just decided to change it up. Cool. Yeah, I think now I recognize why that looks familiar. I think this one is the one mm -hmm. Phil Diaz had for Lost Pages or something. Yeah, cool. Yeah, you know, the same artist uh, who did the Masquerade story. Cool. All right. I mean, I'm definitely going to go through your tiers and stuff, but um, I just don't know if there is anything else that you want to kind of uh, talk about with it. Uh, yeah, like I said, it does have uh, three stories in the book. Uh, so you have like the main story, which I kind of described, mm. uh, you know, about David kind of, you know, dealing with Akula and kind of finding out about him. The uh, epilogue story is actually a bit of a mystery piece. It's kind of like uh, I equate it to Lost in some ways, kind of uh, anybody who's seen Lost uh, knows that they have the, the main story, which is about the survivors of the plane crash. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they'll bring in a, a randomly, there'll be this guy in a hat somewhere. And you don't know, like, how does this guy fit in with, the, with, with these people who survived on the island? You know, so it's a bit of a mystery piece of so more you watch kind of like the story becomes clearer. So the epilogue, I'm going to have one in each volume. So as you read the stories in, in the back, it'll tell like a whole complete different story and it'll tie in with the main story eventually. Mm. And then, like I said, we had the, uh, the four page origin story, which uh, introduces Angelique and some of her background and stuff. And yeah, so it's kind of like, uh, it's, it's going to be kind of, kind of like a similar kind of, uh, each volume is going to have something similar. There's probably going to be the main story, the epilogue, and then it'll have some sort of bonus story at the end. I kind of want to keep that theme going. That's cool. Uh, yeah, you guys are really clever with that. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not really a writer or a, I don't know, 
fictional kind of creative person. I, I, I'm more of an aesthetics kind of person, but creating a book, being a comic book creator, it was really interesting kind of exercise to figure out how to piece kind of these stories. Because I, ha I have a basic idea of what I wanted, but then it's like, well, how do you make that a story? You know, how do you piece it together? So yeah. kind of what you're talking about, having these little side pieces, but then they kind of tie in together. I mean, that's, it's really creative. And uh, yeah, are you like a uh, experienced writer or you, this is kind of your thing? Do you I'm study not, it? This is a, this is my first book. Uh, you know, like I said, I am a lifelong comic book fan. You know, when I was younger, right. uh, you know, going off, going to high school, you know, I, I wanted to be an artist. So I had, you know, I had this notebook full of stories and characters and ideas mm -hmm. that I wanted to like uh, put up, uh, you know, to fulfill them. But it's always something that's always been in my mind. I've always had different ideas and kind of, it's, it's kind of been easy for me to come up with it. So, you know, once that comics gate kind of was created, it really gave me an outlet to put that kind of yeah. imagination and that, those stories yeah, in yeah. a place and make it possible. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I kind of felt the same way. Not that I'm really into the, like having these stories, but I, as, as Lady Alchemy, I kind of had this uh, fantastical version of, of my life <laughs> that was kind of a story. So it's really awesome to get it out. That, and that's what Comic Skate kind of allows the opportunity to do. Otherwise, it, you know, I wouldn't have been able to tell that story. That's cool. Um, so let's look at perks. You have a ton that's actually sold out. I kind of want to look at that first, just because I'm always curious what's what sells. Um, you have Joe Ball. I heard that name before too. Joe Ball. He's uh. Yeah, he's done a uh, a lot of art and he did a superhero. Hmm. Yeah, he he's pretty he's well known throughout. Uh, CG, very yeah. authentic guy. So yeah, he did some sketch art for me that sold out. I think within the first couple of all days. Uh, he's a great, great artist, so it was great to have him, him do a couple of pieces for me. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that was so the sketch for Joe Ball, The Ace, another Joe Ball sketch. Ooh. Okay. Is that a real one? Got to work, but thanks for the stream. Nope, it's not a real one. It's an old one. I've memorized all the damn old Super Chats. Why is that still popping up? Where is that coming from? Hmm. All right, well, that might annoy us a little bit more. I don't know where it's coming from. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm plagued by old Super Streamlabs donations. I never thought I would find that. The noise. ghost of uh, Super Chats? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. I never thought I would haunting the stream. <laughs> I never thought I'd find that that uh, noise annoying. You know, you hear the noise and you get excited. Like, Yay! There it is. It's gonna keep happening for a second. Sorry about. It. I don't know where the widgets are. My I... super chat is working again. Yep, we heard you that. We heard that one already today. Yep. <laughs> I swear, I used to get so excited hearing that noise, and now I'm just like, no, <laughs> shut up. Oh god. I don't understand. I don't even see a widget on here. Oh, what was I saying? The Joe Ball sketch card. A Kula. Okay, that's the bad guy. Kula. That sounds like Asian. What what where'd you get that name from? Uh, it's actually Russian. Russian. Hmm. Asian Russian. Kinda similar actually. Mm -hmm. Flew over Russia to get to China one time. I was really amazed how close they were. Um, <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, God. <sighs> Rembrandt Respector. Yeah, yeah. Rembrandt Respector. We heard that one. Yep. This is when I was doing art, art history streams. So I was going over Rembrandt and shit. Josh, I hope you're enjoying this. <laughs> he's a big donor of mine, so he's always sending super chats. It's really sweet. But uh, he'll get a kick out of it when he checks this out. <laughs> he'll, it gets, it's also funny to like see yourself in like an alternate dimension kind of form. You know? <laughs> he'll be like watching it again, being like, what? Uh, yeah, 
yeah, no, this Joe Ball sketch, that one's really cool, actually. The one of Vakula, I like the uh, hatch and the cross hatch. I think that's like, I just love them. I can draw like that. It's really cool. Um, yeah, like, Joe's are known for that. So that's mm -hmm. kind of makes his style stand out. Yeah. Oh. Sent you an actual stream lab. Not, Not a, a glitch, glitch this, this time, time. lol. <laughs> Have a mediocre bottle of wine on me, lol. We're going to hear the same ones over and over again. Uh, if you guys want to send me a real Streamlabs donation, you could always go to... Let me put myself on the screen again real quick. Uh, if you want to send me a real Streamlabs donation, that would be appreciated instead of these uh, the ghosts. You can always go to streamlabs.com slash mushroomer32v and you'll notice the difference between the ghosts and a real Streamlabs donation because this thing will actually change. My little grid here will change. But if you, you know, are like, fuck you, Martina, that's fine. But you can always go to Edwin's campaign here, which is should be in the description if you're watching on YouTube. And I have put it in... Uh, ha, ha, ha. Here you go, it's in the chat now. And, uh, yeah, you could always, uh, help Edwin out and, uh, you know, it's, you get something out of it instead of sending a, me a super chat, which I'm not saying, I'm not saying not to, okay? I will always appreciate a donation, <laughs> but if you want to get something for your money, you could maybe get some artwork and some entertainment via comic book form if, if you want something for your money. Anyway, yeah, all these Joe Ball sketches are people snatching them up and then we have another a sketch card by michael beacon which is sold out as well so that's another artist yes cool yep so uh, michael beacon uh the book we're called seven legions uh he's a really talented up-and-coming artist so uh you know he was able to do a couple for me and again i still have what was that? Sorry, little glitch. No, I said, uh, people. Um, <laughs> fuck, I can't stop having technical difficulties today. Um, <laughs> yeah, he, you were saying that he's an up and coming artist. That's awesome. I should check him out. Make sure I follow him as well. And gotta, you know, get in with the good artists, especially if they're solid and they're reliable. That's awesome. That's what I need in my life. Um, so you had a bunch of different artists make some sketches and, and sold that. That's an interesting concept. I like that. Yeah, you know, like, uh, like I said, people like original art, and sometimes you can't really pay. The original art prices so you, you get this kind of mini art with the sketch cards and they're original there was only one of them so they're collector's items and like i said if you're a fan of joe ball you get an exclusive akula sketch card you can joe ball yourself to get a sketch card you know there's only going to be one of those so it's a very collector's item that you can have a joe ball for not too high a price so kind of helps everybody out that's really cool I like that. I'm going to make note of that, too. Thanks for that. Um, and then we have another Ace sketch card by Brandon Diaz. That's right. The Diaz Brothers. Magic Cop 2 is out now on Indiegogo. Right, right. Love There's it. actually one of those left. One of those is left. So if you're a fan of Magic Cop or you're a fan of the Diaz Brothers, you can snatch up that last one before I... Uh, before it goes. All right, cool. Yeah, let's go up and check those out. I just like to see what people snatched up because it's like, you know, <laughs> it's like one of those things where it's, it's like, uh, if other people wanted it, there must be something to it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So then there's the the Ace by Brandon Diaz as well. Awesome, awesome. And then you have, God, again, sold out. People love this stuff. The original yeah. art. I'm going to have to do more of that kind of concept. I might have to uh, hit up Diaz or some other people, too, that kind of appreciate what I'm going through and want to help <laughs> me out with some good rates because, uh, yeah. 
So we have another sold out one, Ace Card by Passion for Drawing. Cool. Yeah, well, uh, my buddy Passion, uh, you know, we do the uh, drawing aces together. So uh, he's a great colorist. So he did uh, some really, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> some unique uh, colored ones, which is, again, very, very nice collectible. Mm. So. Cool. And uh, yeah, he did Akula as well, Passion for Drawing. Yeah, these are some colored ones. What, what is that marker? What is his medium? Yeah, he used uh, Copics. Cool. I really like that kind of aesthetic. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, and then he also did the David card, Passion for Drawing. Yeah, that coloring is... Excuse yeah, me while I grab a drink. Yeah, yeah, do your thing. Yeah, that coloring is pretty awesome. It's pretty fun. And he also did the Angelique card. Ooh. Okay, we didn't get far down here yet because uh, now we I see stretch goals. Angelique here has has red hair, not the blonde one. Is that the same Angelique? Yes. Oh, like I said, uh, no, Angelique is actually a redhead. You know what? That's amazing because... Yeah, that another one. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, I love that one. She's so sexy too. I love it. And uh, the whole Nephilim thing, too, they actually have red hair and green eyes and fair skin. So that really hits off with that angel bloodline kind of thing. I love that. That's why I, like, dyed my hair red at one point. I actually kind of have reddish hair right now. Uh, okay, so we have the Ace Print Original Art. Yeah, that one's, uh, that one's really intense. Who's the artist for that? The one that's sold out 125 US dollars? That one's uh, Mike McMahon. Yeah, that one's amazing. That's McMahon. He's an artist who does a full 11 by 17 page. So uh, somebody's going to get that. Yeah, uh, that's you know, amazing. when I start shipping out. That's amazing. Yeah, let's uh, look back up now what is available. So you have your featured, which is the Ace comic print and poster for only $30 what and it's 32 pages book that's amazing it's a good deal yeah it is and uh actually since we're in the second 30 days uh you know one of the things I want kind of want to let everybody know is that uh you know I'm I run things a bit kind of uh as exclusive so we we offered up the uh the Donald DeLay cover as a poster but that's only going to be going for the next 16 or so days until it goes in demand. And then once it does that, it goes away. Same thing with the uh, Hardline uh, Jam Piece poster. That's mm -hmm. also going to go away in about 16 days when we go in demand. Mm -hmm. So we, we're trying to offer stuff that's limited. So if anybody out there wants it or is interested, this is going to be your last chance to get these. Uh, you know, They're going to be gone. So yeah. uh, I'm one of those people, I believe, in actually offering exclusives to, to Indiegogo backers. So. Mm. Now's your chance to get it. See, you're doing a really good job with your campaign. That's so smart. Yeah, and then the, if you just wanted the poster, the Hardline Jam Piece poster by itself, it's only 10 bucks. That's, again, really good deal. Damn, who are you getting to print these posters? Uh, I'm still talking to some people behind the scenes. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. You know, trying to make sure, like, you know, who, where to order the prints, where to order the posters, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, because yeah, I, uh, you know, wasted a lot of money on uh, a lot of unnecessary posters with my former team. And uh, even now trying to start that over again on a budget, it's like, it's, it's difficult. I mean, that it's difficult to uh, get things in. And, and I know it's like, oh, in bulk, it's not so bad, this or that, whatever. But it, it all adds up, man. It's, it's tough to get it things printed. And then you got to ship it. It's, it's just a lot going on. Uh, and then you have the Ace cover poster. Again, ten bucks. That's quite a deal. I'm just looking at the cover poster now here because it's right in front of me. Um, yeah, just looking at the guy, looking at his costumes. I love costumes. So he has like this lasery thing on his arm. What's that about? Yeah, it's uh, an energy blade. So uh, mm. you know he can use that almost kind of like Psylocke does. the ace comic book which is only 15 bucks that's amazing shit yeah 32 pages 
So there's the Ace comic book plus a print. And that's only 20 bucks. And that print I saw down here. Let me just look at it up close real quick. That's great, too. So this is the Mike... Uh, oh, that, that's the artist. Mike McMahon? Yeah, so that's the original one that sold out in black and white in the inking. Right, right. Cool. Yeah, that's going to be a comic size print, so it's going to be cool. nice, uh, nice size print you can show off. Yeah, I really like the, uh, the guys in the background, too, like all the little black and white detailing and the negative space going on back there. I like that. Yeah, Matt did a good job with that. You know, really blew me away. Yeah, just the eye takes it everywhere. That's cool. Uh, man, you offer a lot of stuff. It's crazy. So we have the Ace Comic Book digital PDF. Okay, so you are doing a PDF of the book. And, uh, yeah, it's $20 as well. Amazing. And then you have Angelique card by Brian Diaz. That's still available. Yeah, Brandon uh, Diaz. Yeah, that's the last one left. So if you're a fan, like I said, if you're a fan of Brandon and Magic Copper, the Lost Pages, uh, Go check that out. And then there's the Ace card by Preston. I don't know how to say his last name, but yeah, he's a he's a cool guy. He he does the really great art. He does amazing art. Yeah, Preston Acevedo's uh, insanely talented. Uh, you know, he he was nice enough to do a couple cards for me. So that's cool, Acevedo. That's how you say it. Okay, cool. Yeah, that one's still available, but Preston is a true artist. Yeah, he did a little. Uh, I don't know if he did like a proper, I don't know what you call it, audition for Lady Alchemy or what, but I talked to him a little bit about what he does and his work, and he showed me some of his work, and I was like, wow, that's, it's, it's amazing stuff. Um, yeah, it I think I just, work. I think I just couldn't afford him or something like that. Um, and then there's a Kula card by Preston as well, another card, which is still available, 30 bucks. And you know what, supporting, it, it getting these perks isn't just supporting you it's supporting like the artist as well and like just man it's just it's just so many so much love involved in like supporting this stuff you know <laughs> and that's what's kind of cool about what you did and having all these various artists and stuff it just kind of brings everybody together and everybody can kind of win it's great yeah you know it's a, a lot of this is about kind of finding those like-minded right. people that are uh, all believe in the same thing and have talent so you know you work with talented guys and makes your stuff better yeah so you know that's what i'm trying to yeah we have a viewer that says uh this shark looks cool yeah i was looking at the shark too actually yeah cool has uh, been a big hit a lot everybody uh, anytime i show any art from him people always uh you know make yeah. comments and response and which is awesome you know I, I like to see people you know like uh and enjoy these characters as much mm. as I do because I have a lot of fun stuff planned for him in the future so the more as uh, the more they read about him yeah and I'm looking at the picture again here the cover picture and uh, he has a bit humanoid forms like the arms and stuff and he's out of water so what's his background like what what when how did he become a thing and I also really like this cover picture because it's like his head is in his map the shark mouth which is just so it's perfect for yeah. <laughs> a shark kind of character. That's amazing. It's it's great. It's a great composition. Yeah, Donald did a great job with that. So uh, big shout out to him. But yeah, Akula's uh inner inner space uh, bounty hunter. Uh, you know, he comes from a world of uh, of kind of mer uh, humanoid marine kind of animals. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, I have a whole thing kind of touching on his background and his story. But yeah, he, he's uh very much kind of inspired by characters like Lobo. Stuff like that. Uh, so you know, he he's basically uh, somebody who who's uh, known throughout you know the galaxy for tracking down uh, powerful beings, and you know he ends up tracking down uh, the Ace, and he wants the armor for himself. So uh, that's kind of uh, like I said, we just touch a little bit on him. Like future volumes are really gonna get deep into like his background and 
more of his origin, which is a lot of fun, actually. Like, uh, I've written it. I already have some stuff lined up. It, it's it's going to be a blast. Well, I don't know if you could fit into his outfit, Sharky. Sorry. <laughs> you might have to uh, work on that. Uh, <laughs> just a little fashion joke, you know. Uh, two copies. We got two copies of the Ace and two prints for 40 bucks. These are really great prices. Amazing, guys. And then original art by, how do you say that? Uh, Ibai Canales. Ibai Canales. Yes. 125. So what's going on here? Is it the collection of it? Uh, no, I have uh, 10 of the original art pages uh, Canales sent over to me from Spain. And, uh, wow. you know, there are basically, you know, I think there's only the second campaign that he actually offered his original art. It's, it's very rare since he lives in Spain. So, you know, but yeah, I was able to get 10 pages from him and uh, we're offering them, you know, yes. first come, first serve. Uh, you know, if you buy one, I'll send you the images and you can kind of have your pick uh, as you want. So there's a lot of cool pages in there. So if you're a fan of Ken Alice and his art, uh, you know, this is a very rare thing to, to pick up some of his original art pages. Awesome. Yeah, there's uh, one claimed already, so there's only nine left. Mm -hmm. So, cool. Yeah, man, it's good that you have some original art, because uh, my guy, Dario, was doing um, it all digitally, and I was like, damn, do you have any original art I can do? <laughs> so, yeah, cool. All right, let's get into down here. There were some additional, uh, what is it, bonuses or whatever. But here, we're, we're still working on the main part of the book. I just kind of wanted to look at the pictures again real quick. Okay, let's start from the top. Yeah, I mean, this cover is amazing. The composition, there's movement. And, uh, and then... What's going on? If you don't mind, I mean, you don't have to tell too much of the story. I don't know if this is just to show the artwork, but, um, you know, I get curious who this lady is with the black hair holding the book and if the book is uh, anything. Yeah. Uh, that's David's mom. Oh, his mom. Okay. Yeah, because his, his family life yeah. kind of involved in this as well. Yeah, we, we touch a bit on what's kind of going on in his life. Right. Uh, you know, in between where he found the armor and now, and uh, his mom definitely, uh, you know, plays a, a nice part in the book. It's, it's actually some of my favorite pages. So, yeah. That's great. Yeah, it looks like he sees this probably the crash that happened or something. I don't know. I don't want to give too much away, I guess. I don't know. Uh, him and his mom here in his bedroom. Very typical dude bedroom. <laughs> he got the sock. The sock is so cute. Yeah, oh yeah Canales uh, did a great job. He put a little couple Easter eggs in the background there <laughs> for uh, for a couple comics. I really like this one too because uh, the the action here is really cool with the punch kind of coming at you, and then the smaller panel with the silhouette in the city and the blood. That is just it's really cool. It, it makes it almost like you could see it like a movie, you know? Yeah. Uh, the cool thing about this is, is uh, you know, Canales, uh, usually, you know, the comics he's put out have all the black and white or gray tones. So you actually get to see his work colored in this book, mm. which is, again, is something rare. And, uh, <laughs> I think it really makes this stuff pop even more. Like the, the full page of that shot right there, it's beautiful. Yeah, it really is. And then, um, okay, okay. Then we get some sci-fi shit happening on me here. And this is actually interesting too. See, I, lo I love how you guys do this. And I, I'm always fascinated with my artists as well when, I mean, I came up with the story <laughs> and, and then Vaughn, you know, put it in script form and it's like, okay, okay, that works. And I'm always amazed when I get the artwork back. I'm kind of like, oh, cool. I see what you did there. <laughs> it's like, it's my own story. And I'm kind of going, oh, cool. That's how that goes. Uh, where, I mean, I see it as the, him looking out the window and there's this shooting thing, glowing thing, and this is a close-up version of it falling, I'm assuming, what he's looking at out in the sky. Oh, no, that's no? actually uh, a cooler ship that he's looking at. Right, 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 yeah, so whatever you call it, the glowing thing in the sky, 
Uh, but the <laughs> way that it's drawn is like he's looking out the window at it, right? That's this thing yeah. coming down. And then the background image is like a close up version of it falling or flying or whatever it's doing. Yeah. I think it's a cool setup of the shot. I like that. That's yeah. really cool. That's an amazing page because uh, when I talk to Canales, the notes on the page are actually very simple. It's, you know, David uh, looks out the window and he sees the ship going towards Earth. Uh, I didn't describe the ship. I just gave him a couple of loose kind of ideas. I right. just told him, you know, you know, do your thing on it. And then when he came back with this cool design of the ship, which I love, and he came up with the the the, the alien writing on it and everything. I love that. Yeah, it's I just love it. amazing, like stuff. It blew me away, and like. That's what you know, I like say. I said, when you find guys like that, you know, it just I want to keep working with them. I'm like Canales, man. As long as as long as you want to keep working, I'll have I'll have uh, I'll have stuff for you to do, man. Cause right. I think we really we click really well. That's amazing. Yeah, that's great. That's what I'm talking about, man. When I like, it's, it's my story, you know, that I submit it to my artist, and when he comes back with something, I go, oh, cool. <laughs> This story's looking pretty cool now. Yeah, I dig. Yeah, I really love the alien writing and the blue tones and everything of it. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, okay, so Ace Epilogue Part 1, Part 1 Page by Sweens? What's that? Am I, is that below yep. or up here? Yeah, that's uh, below. That's the uh, the page uh, with, the, uh, with the ship in it. So this is a different artist. Yep, that's an artist called Sweeney. He, he works on this book called Oddity. Mm. Uh, he does like, like the epilogue story. Uh, you know, he, he's got a very, very kind of a different style. It is, yeah. Uh, you know, where anybody, yeah, if you see Oddity, it's kind of, it's about kind of this, this frog teenager guy. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like funny and weird, but this is more like sci fi oriented. So you really got to see him kind of flexes muscles here and he also does a great job with the colors he colors yeah. his own work really makes it stand out yeah it's it's really lovely actually uh, i feel like the art is very mature and um the colors there's something about the muted tone. it almost looks 60s to me which i really like like that mid-century modern space age 60s kind of stuff i really like it it's cool that's just my perspective. I'm into that all right now. <laughs> I'm like all about that right now. <laughs> yeah, no, it's that, that kind of classic sci-fi look is yeah. always. I love it. That's yeah, always timeless. Cool. Oh, and then he's got his, yeah, okay. And these comic book, um, the onomatopoeia is always so funny to me. Like when Vaughn writes it into, it's like, wham. Like no, it's not even wham. It's like, it, it, the like like this one too. Like it always cracks me up. I'm like, what is that? Like I've never heard of that noise. Work. Yeah, that's that's the fun part about it. you can always uh, when talking to I was talking to my letter, and you know trying to give him different kind of sounds, and yeah. you know you write absolutely ridiculous like, like yeah. but it kind of works. It's one of those comic things that only work in comics. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, like Vaughn comes out with some, and I'm just like, what is that? Like, okay, whatever works, man. <laughs> this is really beautiful, too, this space age looking stuff here. It's beautiful. That'd be a great poster, too. Like, just the spaceship and that glowing yeah. planet. And it's very, yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah, like, uh, Suisse does a tremendous job on this. I'm really excited. For people to like see uh, what he's come up with for these pages. Mm -hmm. And then there's the um, Angeli, the panels by Howl Comics. So this has the different vibe, which mm. kind of works because now we're getting to some sexy babes, you know what I mean? Hips, boobs, I love it, all about it. Um, yeah, Howl has a great style. Uh, I kind of like compare them. I always almost see it as like a dark fairy tale. Mm. So he's got a very kind of unique style. He also colors his own work. Mm. So it really, even though it's different, it really kind of fits everything I wanted to do perfectly. Yeah, cool. And I guess this is her like family member right here. She's got the same ears, this Angelique ear things. 
Yeah. Like the mom or whatever. And uh, oh, look at the little angel picture in her home. <laughs> Cute. Oh, oh, I see him creeping over here. The bad guy. Um, and then we have the additional tiers. So there is the Mike. How do you say it? Mick, is it McMahon? Mick, McMahon? Yeah, Mike McMahon. McMahon. That's how you say that. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Um, comic sees. Oh, sees. Comic size print color by Simon Sim Pothier. Tales from the Natverse. Okay. Yep, uh, Sim did the color for that piece. So, uh, so. Cool. Yeah, that, that's the uh, comic size print, and then yep. after that is the uh, the jam piece poster. Yeah. Which the cool thing about that is that uh, you know it's the first ever kind of jam piece, and what I mean by jam piece is that several different artists actually worked on on the page. Hmm. So you had uh, Joe Ball did a couple years. Uh, Passion for Drawing did a couple. Character that Simon uh, did a couple characters in Sweden. Did a couple characters. He actually collaborated on that. It's not one artist doing all the drawing. It's several different artists. And then it was colored by Michael Beacon. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. So it's kind of a very unique piece. And then the the full thing actually is lettered and has a nice logo on it and everything. It's really gonna it's gonna be nice. I, I'm actually that's one of my the favorite things <laughs> that I want for myself. I I wanna be able to put that up on my wall because I think right. the, the finished piece is beautiful. It really is. It's cool. Uh, let me get back to this. Yeah. There's a lot going on there. There you go. You got Magic Cop. Oddity. Joe Ball. Yeah. Cool. Stretch goals, 3,500 funding stretch goal, Angelique trading card by Doodle Bags, <laughs> Vestige 2, oh nice, Vestige guys, nice, colored by Passions yeah. for Drawing, Doom Fate, I love it, that's a really pretty sexy babe too, there you go, I always like having a sexy babe in there with hips. Yeah, so uh, if you back the campaign, uh, you know, you will get that exclusive card, you know, that's going for all backers, so cool. that's already been unlocked. Awesome. And then we have 4,000 Stretch Goal, the Ace and Akula stickers by 6AM Comics. Oh my god, this sticker. That is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I'm calling him Sharky. That's what I call him. Yeah, so 6AM uh, is great. Like, his stickers are amazing, you know. So it's a big uh, kind of fan favorite kind of artist. And uh, he was cool enough to do four uh, stickers for the campaign and they've all been unlocked. So everybody's going to get the four stickers also if they back the book. That's awesome. Oh, so yeah, this is this, this another sticker, right? Yep. Cool. Yeah. That's man. You've got so many people doing really cool, different things on this project. It's wow. 4,500 stretch goal, Angelique and ACE red and blue stickers by 6am comics. Again, it's just, uh, I love it. Cool wings, too. Look at these guys. I think they're so cute, these drawings. <laughs> they're just so cute. Huh. Okay, wow. And then you have this really, like, after these really cute ones, they're just so cute. <laughs> then you get like it's almost like a ch chibi or something. What do you call it? Chibi, chibi. Yeah, the chibi style. And then you get into like the super serious, dramatic, like epic kind of art right here, which I personally, Spirit Lady Alchemy, I love that stuff. So it's the five thousand dollar stretch goal by Jim. What is it? How do you say it? O'Reilly. O'Reilly. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So this is a print. And this is really cool. Yeah, it's a beautiful uh, comic size print by Jim, colored by Theo Gonzalez, who uh, who did the colors on the cover and the main story. Mm. So that that's kind of the stretch goal we're kind of aiming at right now. We're a couple hundred dollars away, so hopefully we can mm. get to that. Yeah, man. You know, within the next couple of weeks. Hell yeah, let's make it happen. 
So what's going on here? Because I see Akula, Akula, Akula um, over here on the left. He's also entwined with this creature as well as Ace. This yeah. is a new kind of character that you yeah, choose. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit, I call it like a little sneak peek of mm -hmm. the possible future that could be going down in future stories. Mm, I like that. So, you know, just a little teaser for everybody, just, you know. I do have uh, some some fun stuff coming up. Like I said, Akula will be sticking around. Uh, I know that some people are like, oh, they don't know if he's like, I can spoil, you'll see Akula again. <laughs> and he's going to be having a lot of fun uh, adventures. So uh, no need to worry about that. That's awesome. Ooh. And then we have 5,500 stretch goal PM and Antunas? Antunas, yeah. Antunas. There's no kill like overkill. Sexy Angelique print. Ooh. Yeah. I like that. Looks cool. I like Angelique. Um, okay. Yeah. So we went through the campaign. Cool, cool. I love it. You have a lot of amazing stuff. You're doing a really good, smart job with it. And uh, I hope that I can at least get you... Uh, between now and my uh, YouTube premiere, some, you know, at least a few more backers, you know, share some backers with you. That'd be cool. Yeah, like I said, uh, you know, I'm just grateful for the opportunity and, you know, no complaints from me, you know, first time creator putting out a book, you know, kind of, uh, you know, the support has been great. So uh, we're just here trying to push it and, you know, like the more kind of we can kind of get this campaign to go. It also helps kind of fund some of volume two. Right. So, you know, it, it'll help make that a little easier. So, but yeah, you know, uh, I'm very happy with everything that's going on. And we got like another 16, 17 days about uh, before it goes in demand. And like I said, some of those tiers will be going away. So uh, now's your ch kind of chance to grab them before uh, they're gone. We want to have a more kind of stripped down campaign once it goes in demand, you know, because right. that's when I'm going to start, you know, that's gonna i'm gonna have to start looking to to order the prints and the posters and all that so mm -hmm. a lot of my focus is gonna be on like placing a lot of the orders for the books and everything so yeah for sure i mean you're doing a really good job i'm really shocked that it's your first one because my first one has a lot of issues <laughs> <laughs> um it's just amazing so few people said some stuff in here what is it uh yeah the, the shark looks cool uh, what are all these guys fighting for? A woman? Money? Well, I mean, from what you said earlier, uh, the shark, Sharky, that's what I'm calling him. Sorry, I know he has a name already. But Sharky's, he, he's fighting for the, the, the suit, man, the, right? He wants that suit. Yep, he, he wants the armor, you know. It's a very valuable, uh, very valuable object that he's after, you know. He, he's, he's somebody who's, who's after power, money, that kind of stuff. So he, his motivations are pretty... Uh, clear and then david's fighting for his family he's fighting for himself you know he's uh you know like i said akula shows up at his front door so right away there's like a real sense of danger yeah you know because yeah. his mom is there and then you know he's got to defend himself and he's got to right. you know try and take on this challenge so uh yeah. that's what they're fighting for and then um i just refreshed my page because i was just trying to see where we're at here hold up Okay, yeah, there we go. I see us now. Um, <laughs> sex and violence, don't you think? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's always good to have, like, a sexy babe in, in the comics. So I think doing it in a clever way, like, with, um, I think Angelique fits for your story because it, it is a lot of celestial beings. You have spacecrafts, and, I mean, it just fits. I see it. I see it fitting, like I say, with the Nephilim kind of thing, which is based in... I mean, I say real life, but uh, basically lore. A lot of our history and lore comes from that kind of stuff. So outerworldly beings are like angels and stuff like that. And I just, it makes sense. It's cool. And uh, we have Hex Allen said, Hail Edwin the Ace. <laughs> no, hail Hex. <laughs> Great. Um, all right, man. I don't know. You can always just chit chat some more if you want but we've been on for over an hour and 
I don't know, just want to make sure you show everything that you wanted or tell everything that you wanted because um, I'm not the biggest channel out there, but, you know, I may be able to reach a few more people, other people too, because my following isn't just Comicsgate. It is various, some comic skaters, some other various artsy art world kind of people that are familiar with comics, but they don't know all the ins and outs. They don't know all the people. They don't know what's going on with the politics of comics or anything. So just getting your project out there uh, to, even if it's five, five new people, that's progress, right? Yeah, you know, everything helps. Uh, and, you know, the thing is, you know, as creators, we got to expand our, our fan bases. We got to yeah. go and try out, you know, like I said, I'm, I've been trying out minds, different social media, mm. just anywhere that people are, you have to go. You got to show them your idea. You oh, never yeah. know who's watching, who's looking. And, you know, the only thing I do want to touch on is uh, I do have a YouTube channel. It's mm. called uh, Drawing Aces. Uh, I do uh, a stream we call the Pin Stream, where we have uh, different creators on to talk about their books. We do that every Friday at 10, awesome. 15 p.m. Eastern. And we also do a movie watch-along stream every Sunday night at uh, 10 15 p.m. Eastern, so uh, you guys can go hang out. And, uh, you know, like I said, we have a pretty open invitation, uh, you know, uh, for, for creators. And, you know, like we have, uh, you're just trying to pay forward, you know. Uh, I used to do, uh, you know, my show, Drawing Aces with Passion for Drawing, where we used to interview creators like Martina and, you know, uh, you know, we, we kind of take because both of us are really busy uh, with, with our own projects. So this is kind of my way of kind of keeping that alive. And then I also have a pro wrestling channel. It's called uh, Indie Wrestling Aces. Uh, that channel is uh, just crossed the 6,000 subs mark. Wow. So uh, I'm going to be doing a giveaway on March 27th at 10.15 p.m. Eastern. So you can come hang out on my pro wrestling channel. Uh, we'll be hanging out there, uh, giving away some uh, some cool stuff. What, what was it? It's Indie... Wrestling aces. Wrestling aces. That's that's awesome too. You know, I uh, <laughs> I sent an application to uh, like WWE or some shit. I was like, "Fuck it, I'm becoming oh. a wrestler, Lady Alchemy." <laughs> 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 Obviously, you know, I don't have the training and experience and all that. So, but I do have the no, I have the characters, so there's something. Yeah. No, they're always looking for like people who who have they can train you. That's like yeah the easiest thing that they can do you know yeah. like as long as you have like a personality and you have something that they see in you right. you know they've given opportunities to people who have like no sort of like physical background or anything right. you know like yeah. that's why they create a whole performance center to train people yeah the like next or whatever it's called yeah i'm definitely still interested in doing that after i have a kid or something but that's really interesting that you're into the wrestling thing too i mean there's so many crossovers with people and this is why i think our fan base is definitely a crossover uh, there's people that are into some of the wrestling stuff as well. They think it's kind of cool. A lot of the comic book people, uh, they're, they're supporters. They're patrons. They're not just, like, into it. There's a lot of people that are patrons of, of creators, so it's really great. I hope they check you out. Um, also, I also do some movie streams as well. Uh, I don't know how you're doing it because I, I have issues sometimes because I always look for, obviously, copyright-free, public domain films but even them sometimes youtube picks up on and it causes me problems and i'm like god damn it like can you just chill youtube i'm playing some really obscure public do domain films you don't need to be up my ass youtube is awful with that so, yeah like uh, we, we do it very simple mostly you'll hear the, the panel talking but yeah. we, we stream it through uh sims discord so we'll have the movie playing there and then we, we can talk and keep oh. up with the chat Cool. And so it avoids all the copyright issues because they, they will hit you for anything. Yep. Like you can't even play around. Like YouTube is not a place I for know. that. So so we kind of do a little work around. So. That's a really smart idea. Cool. But yeah, that those are always really um, big hits on my channel when I have been able to do it and they didn't give me problems. And doing the public domain ones, I mean, they're generally really shitty films, but it's like sometimes so bad it's so good that my like, yeah. followers are kind of like, they still bring up some of the ones that we watch. What is it? Vampire Hookers for Halloween. I mean, they're still bringing things. That, it's like inside jokes now on our, on our stream. But they're always asking for it back. They are, they're always interested. So I think that's something that my 
followers would also be interested in. So I'll, I have it in the uh, description. I put it in the chat, the links to both of his YouTube channels. Like I said, there's a lot of crossover. And uh, yeah, and the, the movie streams are a big hit. People are always asking for them. So it'd be really cool if you guys... Some, some of my viewers are also... I mean, this is their community is like coming on to my streams and listening to art history or watching a crazy movie or and interacting with the chat. So there's people that are really hungry for a community that's a bit like ours. And I don't want to get too much into it and really get into politics or whatever. But um, Edwin is also, I guess I could say, a comic skater. So um, yep. I can assume from that that he's an anti-SJW. So I don't want to do much. <laughs> very much. Okay, great. <laughs> so yeah, that's again a lot of the people in uh, in my chat are really smart and into art and uh, just really crave the community that I'm building. And I think that your kind of community that you're doing is also in line with that. And I hope to be a part of it uh, as well um, if I can. And uh, maybe they'd like to check it out and see what what you guys are. Ooh see what you guys are up to and what's going on on your channels so awesome um all right man i don't know i don't want to like rush off so i might just like take a breather for a second um, i could always play your video too oh, it, there we go yeah i was playing in the intro but it never hurts to continue to play it a little bit um i do have it ready to go i think Yeah, uh, I gotta say, I, I might be biased, but I'm a big fan of the trailer. Uh, Red Gaze uh, my, it captures everything that's in the book perfectly. I, I feel like I didn't prep it, so I'm gonna prep it now. You guys just hold on tight and chill while you know? my face is awkwardly on the screen like this. <laughs> um, create new. <laughs> Mm -mm. Let's do the Ace commercial as I talk out loud what I'm doing because I'm an old lady. Okay, where did I have it? Where did I download the video? I too go. That's why I downloaded it. Said, 
Yes, a marvelous trailer from the Red Gaze. Yeah, and I was just checking it out a bit and now watching the trailer after going over the stream with you and understanding the storyline a little bit more, I'm kind of like, okay, yeah, I get it, I get it, cool. <laughs> I dig. It's fun. All right. Is there, uh, you know, anything else that you want to promote or talk about? I wish we had more going on in the chat right now. It's a, uh, it's a bit, it's a bit dead. I think most people are at work right now, and also, um, like I said, the D live is always a bit lame. And then uh, I'll send you the link when we're live on YouTube, and I think that people will be chatting and engaging and interacting about your thing and having a little bit more questions and kind of comments about it. So. We'll send you the chat if you want to get into the chat while it premieres live on YouTube. It's always more fun when it's interactive. Oh, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> cool. Uh, when I do that, uh, I'll spread it around to uh, to my peeps and uh, might, might even take over yes. the chat, you know, the uh, okay. chat rate, depending well, if everybody's around. <laughs> well, that'll be cool because then we can all kind of like meet. It's kind of like a virtual meetup. Like, hi, guys. What's going on? Yeah. Only other thing I'd have to promote is uh, I am a part of the Hardline stream. Uh, it's on uh, Zade Comics channel every Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern. It's myself, Brandon Diaz, Phil Diaz, Passion for Drawing, Simon Simpothier, Michael Beacon, Joe Ball. Uh, wow. We might get some special experiences for a couple other people. And we're just a bunch of like guys who are, you know, friends. And we were all creators. We're all kind of doing our own thing in our comics gate. And we're all kind of like-minded, you know? We, we all have kind of the same drive to make very cool comics that we grew up on, that we love. And, you know, to fight against, like, uh, this identity politics and all this nonsense that's kind of mm. going on. But the stream is about having fun, talking about comics. We talk about food topics. Uh, we check out uh, Liz Hurley's uh, Instagram. Mm. You know, we try out... Uh, pretzel uh pop tarts it was just nonsense for about <laughs> an hour yeah. that sounds so fun it's a lot of fun dude i'm in yeah, i'm so in fuck yeah you know it's, it's funny just, too because like on my yeah. oh sorry glitching um yeah no that's funny because on my streams too like when i was in back in new york i was uh when i'd have what is it the debates and the various live streams we i would have a uh, bunch of treats like the weirdest treats like i'd go to a bodega and just get like weird candies <laughs> i love sweets <laughs> so i just get like the weirdest candies or i would get one time i had um i love rice krispies treats but one time they had fruity pebbles treats it was amazing mm -hmm. and so yeah and i made a gushers burrito so I took a fruit roll up and I rolled it with gushers <laughs> in it. It was just like insane wow. shit. So I feel like we're totally have like we're on the same wavelength here. I love it. Have a lot of similar stuff going on. But uh but yeah. yeah. I don't want We love our food topics, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get like, you know, too political on you, but I find it interesting because you are, I guess can I say Hispanic? And um uh, yes, um, and I am Puerto Rican. Don't be fooled by the bad lighting. Puerto Rico. Uh, I think I went to Puerto Rico. That's the U.S. That's the U.S., right? Yeah, I've, I've been there before. Um, and so how how are you so anti-identity politics, anti-SJW? Um, I mean, I get that a lot being an artist and female from New York, and they're like, how, how did you turn out this way? So I kind of have a similar question for you, being Puerto Rican. Um, how did you kind of come out with this mind frame? Uh, you know, I think most of the people that I know that I grew up around are like that. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we got over the race and stuff in the 90s. Like, right. you know, like the, the stuff about you can't say certain words. We fought against that back then. The right. idea that you're just your skin color and nothing else. That was rejected back then. I don't know why 20 years later we're fighting the, the same battles by these weirdos. You know, like, you know, me and my friends, you know, I have friends all races, all backgrounds, all political parties. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, the, the, the stuff that people, they're putting up these walls and these, uh, these fake controversies, you know, none of that's real. You know, you have to face that. You know, one of the things when I came to Comicsgate, you know, I started noticing a lot of my white friends 
and creators were being attacked. And I just found that like, you know, well, wh why are they being attacked? Like, yeah. there's nothing racist. There's nothing, you know, weird about them. They're just normal people. Just because you choose them, it doesn't make it true. So, so I've always been in the front lines. You know, I've always had my name, my face out there because there, I have no fear from these people. And you, you have to face them head on because if you don't, they'll destroy you. Yeah. yeah so, sure. you know, like I said, everybody that I know is the, has that kind of same mentality. We don't believe in any of this kind of woke nonsense that, that people are trying to portray right now. So yeah. to me, it's, it was no brainer. Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel that because, like, even my like mom and older sister and you know my re my my relatives are immigrants. You know, I'm first generation American, and we're, we all have that kind of mentality. We're all old school, and I think the real old school New Yorkers, like Trump is, you know, the boomer New Yorker, the Italian Americans, are all kind of like that. And I could see the Puerto Ricans kind of being like the old school Puerto Ricans, just kind of what are you talking about, like fuck out of here with that shit i don't know what you're talking about yeah. it's mostly just like the hipster ones and like the ones that are like really ingrained and like buying into that sort of thing that start really feeling offended about stuff yeah for sure awesome cool but um hex is also saying that and the farce of mainstream archaeology is discussed on the hard line oh yes yeah. so we're, we're big on uh Ooh. going against uh, mainstream archaeology's lies you know, we're exposed their secrets. You know, we, we believe uh, in people like Graham Hancock. You know, they're they're, they're truth tellers. You know, are you into like uh, the, 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 the pyramids? Are you into like the Tartaria yeah. thing or whatever it's called? Tartaria. Uh, no, we mostly tackle the uh, the how old the uh, ancient pyramids mm -hmm. are. You know, all that kind of that that kind of archaeology stuff. Dude, that's the, the awesome. Stuff. Yeah, we, we get into that too. We <laughs> we had uh big uh, Egypt segments that were here for for a while. Sadly, there hasn't been a lot of news coming out, so it's kind of I think it's uh, affected our stream. But once the archaeology <laughs> news back, we'll be back. Don't worry. Dude, <laughs> it's a big hit with people. We even got uh with uh thumbs down to mainstream archaeology. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Oh my god, that's amazing. That's crazy. Again, that's another parallel because. Uh, I mean, I, I find archaeology really interesting, actually. I have done a few, like, serious, like, newsy-type uh, videos that were about the past few years. There's been a lot of stuff uncovered in, uh, I think, yeah, in Greece, where they found, like, uh, like underneath apartment complexes of, of like, these ancient goddesses and sculptures and Aphrodites and things. So it's always exciting to see new... Uh, archaeology kind of come up even though you're against it um <laughs> and then in the uk it was crazy because they dug up fairly recently through the past few years there was uh between an aldi supermarket and some parking lot i don't know like just random town they found some uh what is it called royal burial of like some what was it again it's royal so it was like some sort of prince like he wasn't a king or anything but it was like some sort of prince or whatever some royal and it was like in the cusp of like when they had pagan kind of stuff still and they did the like burials and all that stuff very like almost egyptian kind of things and they put all of their their pots and clays and like adorn adornments you know jewelry and stuff down there but it was also on the cusp of christianity so it was like right at that cusp and they had a few crosses and things in there it was just just interesting i find it really fascinating but uh, your your version of, of things, and I'd love to hear about what you think. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, if you're a fan of any of that, I suggest a channel called Uncharted X. The guy is absolutely amazing. Uh, he deals with facts. There's no conjecture or fake kind of news. You know, any new uh, recent discovery he tackles in a factual, completely scientific nature. Mm. And so even regardless of which side you fall on, when you listen and watch his videos, uh, you'll, you'll get like a deeper understanding for it. It's I love it. Uh, it's, it's a really cool channel. Yeah. I love it. I'm all about that shit. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. We'll stay in touch. And um, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't really know what else to talk about. I think we're good. But that was really fun. I'm yeah. glad, glad to know you. Got to, glad to get to know you a little bit better. And uh, my viewers will now have another outlet and have another friend. 
And uh, all right, I'll put the outro video on. And I'm going to say bye to y'all. Bye-bye. Peace.